it's one of the favorite things I get to do is I get chills just talking about it. It's an amazing thing. If you ever get a chance to go to one of these immigration ceremonies, uh, they're open to the public. You should do it. It's a, it's a wonderful thing. Well, we have three things today. So we'll have Employee of the Week, we'll have Friday's Heroes, and then we'll have our Good Samaritan. So let's start off with Sarita Silva. So Sarita and Paul, why don't you come up? And I'll apologize in advance since I was a little late getting here. I'm kind of reading this uh, for the first time here. I know, I know, I know what we're doing, but uh, uh, come on in. So who's our friend, Paul? This is Precious. Precious. She's a little two-year-old at Lucky Pots. Excellent. Excellent. Well, today we're here to recognize Sarita Silva for her exceptional care of numerous roosters and hens that have been rescued from suspected cockfighting rings uh, in this area. A little bit of history, I was a state legislator before I was your mayor. And I was in the legislature and I was fortunate enough to be able to vote for the cockfighting ban in New Mexico. So uh, I've got a little bit of a history uh, with this, uh, this as well. So this past June, the Westside Animal Shelters Field Division brought in approximately 50 roosters and 10 hens that were brought, uh, that were thought to be used in a cockfighting ring. Uh, as you know, cockfighting is a blood sport in which uh, spectators gamble on the outcome of a fight between two roosters uh, that usually ends in untreated and sometimes fatal injuries for the animals. The birds are then discarded. Uh, engaging in cockfighting and possession of cockfighting uh, birds for that has been deemed a felony in the state of New Mexico. And since the Animal Welfare Department has taken custody of the animals, uh, Sarita has spent countless hours caring for the rescued roosters and the hens. Beyond this, she has volunteered on her days off to transport the birds to Edgewood uh, for the birds to be adopted uh, at a poultry swap. A poultry swap is an event that allows people to buy, sell, and swap farm animals. As of late August, the last 14 of the roosters and hens had been adopted out. And according to Sarita's supervisor, Natalie, uh, Sarita is a dedicated employee at the city's animal welfare department uh, that goes above and beyond her typical job requirements. She's also described as displaying a great deal of care and compassion towards all of the animals. Uh, that are brought to the West Side Shelter. She's done an exceptional job caring for these animals and uh, making sure that they have a better life and that's why she has been chosen as this week's Employee of the Week. And I've got with me Paul Castor, who's our Director of Animal Welfare, uh, who's going to say a few remarks and then we're going to give out, uh, give our award out. So uh, come on this way and Paul, come on. Thank, thank you Mr. Mayor. It's, it's an honor to be here with Sarita. She is our poultry whisperer. Uh, she takes care of all the chickens, the peafowl, the turkey, whatever we get in. But she also handles some of our hardest to handle animals, our dogs. And uh, it's, it's wonderful to have her out there. She kind of exemplifies what we look for in an employee that cares about the animal. And I appreciate you recognizing her today and thank you so much for thank being you. here. So Sarita, what we have is we have an Employee of the Week mug that we give out to all of our Employees of the Week. And we also have a certificate for you. Uh, let me get it here. That says Employee of the Week for the City of Albuquerque. And then there's a letter also that goes in your personnel file just saying thank you. So thanks for everything you do. And, and I, I want to thank all of the uh, all of the individuals that work at the Animal Welfare Department. Uh, it's a it's a tough and, and job. And uh, every day there's a challenge. Every day there's an uplifting story. Um, this department has been one of the departments during my time as mayor that has really reinvented how they do their work. Um, our euthanasia rates at the department, uh, what's the what's the latest stat? Well, we went um, from, where, where did it go from We that? started when you came in just about 60% uh, live exit and a little over 40% euthanasia. And 2016, we ended up with 89% live exit and 9.7 euthanasia. So if you get to, uh, if you get, yeah. And, uh, you know, it, 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 we, we talk about this idea of, of making this a place where animals can survive, and it, it's, it's for two reasons. Uh, one is because we have a generous community, uh, we have great volunteers that work in the department, and we have a very robust adoption program. But you can't just adopt your way out of the problem. Uh, you have to have a robust spay and neuter program. We've done the trap neuter release program, a little controversial, but it really works with our cats. And so, uh, Paul, thanks to you and all of your employees that go out every day and just do a great job. So, <laughs> you knew there'd be one of those. Moments. I know, yeah, you knew. <laughs> With a two year old puppy. So, all right, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Our Friday's hero today is AFD paramedic driver David Zamora. Who's with you, David? Engine 10. Right, but who's with oh, you? Oh, this is my wife. Yeah. <laughs> More importantly, Catherine Garcia. 
Always a fire, always, always a firefighter first, right? <laughs> if, you, if I would have said who's your family, he would have said uh, Station Ten. As well, so. um, we are recognizing David uh, for responding to a critical incident while off the clock. Um, for the media that's here, you'll remember uh, about two years ago, maybe February fifth. Two years ago. February 5th, two years ago, Chief Downey, uh, I, I, long story, I'd been with a, a mayor from a city in Washington. They had adopted this program called Pulse Point, which is a, an app that you can put on your phone. Um, and it goes to this idea that, uh, you know, seconds matter when it comes to uh, someone who's having a critical incident or a heart attack. So you can download Pulse Point as a citizen, or in this case as a firefighter, and if there is a critical incident that comes through the call center and you're within a quarter mile of that incident, it will alert you and you can go as a good Samaritan and try to render aid uh, to individuals that are, that are in crisis. And we have good Samaritan laws in New Mexico that protect you, so there's no, there's no concern uh, from my understanding about going and helping David right. uh, Downey can talk about that. So this is a story about Pulse Point and how David uh, used that and came to someone's need. Um, so he was on his smartphone, uh, it started alerting him through Pulse Point. At a nearby gas station, there was a person suffering from a cardiac arrest and needed immediate CPR. Uh, the patient was not breathing and did not have a pulse. Despite the fact that he was off duty, and we tell this story over and over again about our firefighters and our police officers helping people while they're off duty, another story today. Uh, he didn't hesitate. He went to the nearby gas station to utilize his CPR training on the patient. Uh, paramedic Captain Santos Garcia arrived at the location and noticed that David had already addressed the emergency situation. Captain Garcia then noted that David remained on scene and continued to comfort the family until the patient was transferred to the University of New Mexico Hospital. Uh, and this is the other side of the story. Unfortunately, uh, the patient did not survive. Uh, but when you get into these situations, if there is a survival, it's it's because someone was there when they needed them. And uh, we've also told stories from this podium about patients that did survive. Uh, David's heroic uh, action prompted him to respond to this dire situation while being off duty. Uh, his distinct character was also motivated him to remain on the scene and comfort the family in their time of need. Uh, for this reason, uh, David was uh, chosen as this week's Friday's hero. And uh, we appreciate you. And thanks for bringing family, too, because I, I love it when, when our folks bring family with them. I'm going to have Dave Downey, our fire chief, tell you a little bit more about David and the Pulse Point, And then we will, uh, we will give the award. Chief. So, thank you, Mayor. Um, I just want to say congratulations, David, to you. David's the type of firefighter that instills the values we want in all of our firefighters. Um, his professionalism in seeing a duty to act, even off-duty, his... Um, patience on scene, his EMS skills on scene, and then his, his just willingness to stay with the family. And it's, it's those, those of us that have responded to a cardiac arrest, it's very traumatic for the family to see their loved one down and in a desperate situation. And for him to recognize that once the other responders took over care to stay there and be compassionate and talk the family through what was happening then and what would happen on the way to the hospital, it's just another element of his professionalism. Um, as the mayor mentioned, as far as the, the Pulse Point app, it's been around for about two years. We, and there are about 5,000 people in the community that have the app downloaded, but only about half of them have activated the CPR alert. So um, we'll get with Melissa and do another round on the two-year anniversary about what Pulse Point is and get some more people registered. Um, and it also has an AED registry. So not only you can use CPR, you can find out if there's a defibrillator next to you as well in a public building, and that helps to the outcome of the patient as well. But the point being, David, congratulations. Um. David, yeah, so we, um, we have this uh, coin commissioned. Uh, it's the Public Safety uh, Hero Award from the Mayor's Office for Police, Fire, and Emergency Management. And it's just with gratitude that I uh, present this to you today. Uh, thanks for your service in the Albuquerque Fire Department. Thank uh, thanks for being great at what you do, and thanks for your heart for service. We appreciate it. And all the men and women of AFD that are here with us today, uh, thank you as well. So, God bless. I'd like to thank the Mayor, thank the Chief, thank Captain Santos. I'm honored and humbled uh, that you um, nominated me for this. And if I may, if I could actually pass this to my wife, because she's the actual real hero. We had been shopping all day for Christmas, um, and as you can see, she's pregnant. I just dragged her around all, ta all over town, and this came at right at the end where I promised her we're gonna be home. <laughs> and she could see that like, 
it was nagging on me and she said you know what turn around let's go check it may not be anything but it's just in case and so if you don't mind please please i'd like to i'm just and so now he's gonna so do you not feel it even though she's tired and she's hung around, even, I know you're saying that we, I hung around the whole time, but it was really her that, um, <laughs> that was there. Uh, so I just thank, thank you. you very much for this opportunity. Thank you. That's great yeah. words. Thank you so thank much. You. And, uh, and, and it's interesting when you talk to, to folks that are spouses and loved ones of our first responders, it's a toll on them as well. Um, when a firefighter or police officer goes to work in the morning, or uh, for their shift. In this case, our firefighters are away from home uh, at least 48 hours on a shift. And uh, it's time away from family to serve your community. So to all the family members, we want to say thank you as well. And, and then, of course, uh, it's dangerous work too at times. And, and we appreciate you uh, giving us your loved ones to, to serve our community. So thanks to all the, all the family as well. So thanks a bunch. Congratulations. <laughs> you think it's you? Is this yours? Oh, okay. So here is the Pulse Point app. So uh, another thank you to the media. Uh, this is how we get the word out. You know, we don't have a we don't have a PR firm down here. So uh, the best way for us to get the word out to the community is to tell folks. You can download the Pulse Point app. Um, this will help you. And if you turn on the alert for CPR, and there are so many ways you can, as a community, educate yourselves on for on first aid on CPR. Uh, project Heart Start, Dr. Ramo, great, pro great project that he has. Uh, we've trained our city employees through that. We've got the American Red Cross. Uh, firefighters, who else can they take training from, Chief? Um, American Heart Association Ameri and Mer the Red Cross. Are the yeah, American Heart Association, Project Heart Start. Um, say it again. I got a mental block. <laughs> For, oh, the Red Cross. Yeah, Red, so Red, yeah, Red Cross, American Heart Association, Project Heart Start, all of these are ways that you can educate yourself uh, on this. And there's a new, there's new CPR, so there's, there's um, a new CPR technique out there where it's hands only, uh, and it's very easy to learn. You can learn it in 30, 45 minutes. So I just recommend everybody in our community, get out there, get yourself trained on CPR. The person that you might save might be one of your loved ones, or it might be a loved one that saves you. And then if you download this Pulse Point app, um, it will help you help others in your community. So thanks for helping us get the word out for that. So it's always a thrill when we get a chance to do a Good Samaritan Award along with, these, uh, with, with Friday's Heroes and Employee of the Week. And today we're going to talk about something that Albuquerque is actually famous for in a very good way, and that's the Heading Home Project. Uh, you've heard us talk about Heading Home throughout the, the time I've been the mayor. Uh, Dennis is, is now the, uh, the executive director, uh, CEO of Albuquerque Heading Home. Uh, it's a project we started through the mayor's office. We kind of incubated it here. Uh, we used uh, providers out in the community that have been doing this work for many, many years. We spun it off into the 501c3. It was Metropolitan Homelessness Project, uh, changed their name to Albuquerque Heading Home. And so now it lives on and it survives and it will be here for many years to come. Uh, and Heading Home, for those who aren't familiar, is a housing first model that we took on in Albuquerque. We wanted to tackle the homelessness issues in Albuquerque in a very intentional way. And instead of sweeping it under the rug or kicking the can down the road or looking the other way, uh, we made a conscious decision that we were going to uh, uh, individually, person by person, block by block in this city, um, impact homelessness, chronic homelessness, veterans homelessness. Uh, we're working on panhandling initiatives now as well. Uh, and we made a big difference. Uh, last year, according to the uh, report that came out from the U.S. Conference of Mayors, uh, Albuquerque dropped unsheltered homelessness by 80 percent. We dropped chronic homelessness by uh, almost 40 percent over the last number of years in the city of Albuquerque. By HUD's definitions, we have reached and are near, always near functional zero for veterans homelessness. And it's a testament to our community and the professionals that do this every day. But you know what? It doesn't happen without the community. In fact, it could not happen without the community, and that's why we're going to talk about Eileen today. This is a volunteer-driven uh, uh, initiative. Just two days ago, we were doing our point-in-time survey that we do every two years, and if you would have been at St. Martin's with us, you would have seen volunteer after volunteer. And this volunteer that we're going to recognize today is 13 years old, and she's absolutely beautiful, and her name is Eileen McFadden. And she's someone that you may have seen on TV before because she was on Channel 4's uh, KOB's Pay It Forward segment. So Eileen bakes cupcakes uh, for local homeless program luncheons. Every month, the Albuquerque Heading Home hosts a peer-to-peer -peer luncheon. The luncheons uh, are for former program clients to come together, share a meal, and share their experiences with one another in the spirit of camaraderie. And one of the things that we know 
is that if we can get people who have been through programs, whether it's substance abuse programs, mental health programs, homelessness programs, if they can return uh, after they've become stabilized and they've helped to uplift themselves through these programs and they can coach and mentor other people that are entering the programs or in the programs, that makes an enormous difference. So that's what these luncheons do. Um, they were in part made possible because of the generous actions of Eileen and her mother, Karen. Karen, how are you? Thanks. My mom's name is Karen as well. <laughs> Every month over the past few years, Eileen and her mom set aside time to bake from scratch four dozen cupcakes for the monthly luncheons for Heading Home's clients. She creates a, a new type of cupcake for each luncheon with flavors ranging from Mayan chocolate to cherry limeade, um, all decorated by hand with love and care. Eileen became interested in baking after viewing the show Cupcake Wars, which my wife also watches, and she soon began to experiment with recipes of her own. Her chocolate and coffee and, and chai frosting cupcake earned her the title of Best Kid Baker uh, for the Southwest Chocolate and Coffee Fest. In addition to baking, Eileen makes healthy cooking videos for the Kids Cook YouTube channel. She also swims competitively. She's a gymnast former aer uh, aerobatics in a circus, wow, um, <laughs> teaches, yeah, that's the first time I've said that in seven years, uh, teaches break dancing and she is a straight A student. Um, she is, uh, and her mom have a very full schedule, but she feels it's important to make time to give back. And when asked about her contributions to Heading Home, Eileen commented, quote, it's fun and I like what Heading Home is doing. I like baking and I don't like homelessness. <laughs> That's that. How, how can you say it any better? Uh, there's enough houses, so I don't see any reason for it. Eileen's cupcakes for the clients who participate in Heading Home Peer to Peer are an example of her selfless and creative character, and it's because of Eileen and, and young people like her that we have a bright future. And I've said this before, uh, when I get a chance to honor youth in our community, as a mayor, you get to see tragic things some days, and some days there's big, big challenges. But um, in some days when you see youth, you only see them in a situation where uh, things haven't gone well or bad decisions have been made. But there are thousands and thousands of kids in this community that are unbelievable. They are awesome. We have awesome youth in this community. And this generation of kids, I've come to realize, is going to, you know, bodes very well for our future. And young leaders like Eileen in that generation are making a huge difference. So. Uh, this is good news for Albuquerque. There's a lot of good things happening with our youth here. Dennis, are you going to say a few things uh, here? So this is Dennis Plummer. So Dennis is an interesting individual. He's uh, dedicated his life uh, to the homelessness. And uh, at one point, Dennis even, I think, checked himself into a homeless shelter just to see what it was like. Uh, early in his career and he's a true believer so maybe you can say a couple words yeah. Dennis. I, I would like to just add my huge thanks uh, the initiative to end homelessness through our partner agencies oftentimes it seemed to end at the house but after the housing comes a reintegration into into our community and it's really weaving back into the social fabric our community and uh, Eileen I don't know that you realize how impactful it is for somebody who's lived maybe 20 years on the street to actually have a home baked good served to them um, at these luncheons and also want to thank you I recently complained we the staff never get to the cupcakes they all get eaten before we get there and and Karen heard me complaining about that and within two days we had a, um, two dozen of cupcakes delivered to staff so oh, that's I really really appreciate that's that. great. That's great. So, you know, don't drink too much coffee, it'll stunt your growth. Uh, uh, but uh, we also have a Good Samaritan Award for you, Eileen, and it reads the, as, as such. On behalf of the entire city of Albuquerque, I, Richard J. Barry, Mayor of Albuquerque, thank you for your public service and your dedication. Your actions have touched the lives of Albuquerque citizens, and we are all very grateful for your generosity and your consideration. And along with the Good Samaritan Award, we've got some tickets to the Albuquerque Bioparks and combination passes. And if you play your cards right, we'll give you the backstage tour. It's pretty interesting. Uh, we'll, we'll bring you down there and show you around. But I uh, uh, just want to say thank you. Um, what a beautiful thing you're doing. And you're, you're, uh, um, you're inspiring all of us. So, so thank you for what you're doing. And congratulations. Thank you want to say a couple of things or not? We um, don't want to put you on the spot, but you're, you're so awesome. I think I'd love to hear what you have. To, if you, sorry for the podium size. We'll, we'll, we'll scoot, we'll scoot so the good. microphones over here. 
I'm just really honored to have this opportunity and I'd like to thank everyone at Heading Home for what they're doing and my swim team and my breakdancing studio <laughs> and yeah so yeah all right <laughs> yeah, so thank you